Hi guys, I'm uh, Woodcraft Hamster and today I want to show you how to make a throw mallet. Uh, so basically, these are a couple of examples of uh, ones I've already made. You've got this one which has the, uh, the bark still on and this one which did have the bark on, however uh, just through normal use it's, it's obviously come off. Um, now you can take the bark off if you want to, it's entirely up to you. Um, I tend to leave it on, it just protects it a little bit more. Um, but there are a couple of different ways you can make these throw mallets. Um, I'll show you the way I do it. It's, I, I find it simpler, it's a little bit easier. Um, there are others which I'll, I'll run through as, as we're doing. So uh, let me show you uh, what it is I plan to do. Right, so to start off with, you want to take um, a fairly thick branch, um, you know, four to five inches. You can go thicker if you want to, um, it just means a lot more work with the axe. Um, this is a piece of birch. You, you might notice that uh, most of my videos uh, I tend to use birch. Um, basically the woodland that I have access to has a lot of birch in it. It's a nice free easy resource for me and it's a nice wood to carve with as well. Um, if you want to use something else obviously you can do. Um, you can go for hardwood which will generally tend to last a bit longer. Um, you can still use softwood. Um, I, I haven't found a problem with using softwood for, for mallets but obviously I don't use them um, day in, day out, but they tend to last a fairly, fairly good amount of time for me. Um, but what you want to do, I mean, this particular piece of wood, you've got quite a large knot in the middle here. Um, this section here is the, is the longer piece between the knot, um, and I'm going to use that as my hammer head, and just gives me a little bit more, um, more length to get a bit more weight in there. The shorter bit, I mean, I, you know, I don't need quite this much for a handle. Um, so they'll do for me. And what you want to do to start off with um, is just start paring this down as evenly as you can with your axe. Okay, so once you've got about this far, um, this is getting roughly to the, the right sort of shape and size for my hand. Um, this will obviously depend on, on the size of your hand, what you feel comfortable with. I like quite a thick hand or something you can sort of you know, get a really good grip on. Um, if you take it too thin, uh, obviously you know you've got the risk that um, you've got quite a heavy weight up the top here, um, and if you're you're hitting things with this, um, potentially if the handle is much too thin, then obviously it, it could snap off, which you don't want. Um, but once you've got this far. Um, you can move over to either a knife, um, draw knife, um, as I tend to use, and I think you've seen this in a couple of my other videos, um, I tend to use a, a more a push knife. Um, this is a great little bit of kit which I will do a review on at some point. Um, and we'll move over to the next step. Okay, so once you're finished off with the axe, um, next step is to move on to, as I say, knife or draw knife. Um, I tend to use this because it just gives you a lot more freedom of movement. Um, again, you've seen this technique before. Um, you use your stomach to hold your, your, uh, your piece of material against um, the chopping block. I mean, if you've got a vice or, uh, or a shave horse, by all means use that. It's just because I don't have one. Um, and essentially all you want to do now is just continue on as you've started, but you want to start trying to round things off, smooth things down to basically give you a nice good handhold.
and there you have it. Um, that was probably all in all about 10 minutes work, so it doesn't take a great deal of time to make one of these. Um, as you can see, the way I've, uh, I've made this one, so you've got a very large head, um, it's probably, that's probably about 10 inches long I suppose, um, small handle, big enough to, to, to fit my hand, you don't need, need anything sticking right out here. Um, as you would if you were using, say, a, a big axe or something. I mean, obviously, if you wanted a, a really heavy-duty one of these, um, I'm not quite sure what you'd need one for. Um, you know, if you needed to go that big, you'd probably use a sledge or something like that. Um, but in terms of the handle, so that's now been smoothed down. Um, I've chamfered off the the end here, um, just because it makes it a little bit more comfortable to use, and it does slightly, not 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 uh, entirely, but it can help to prevent splitting on the end as it as it dries out. Because this is still a fairly green piece of wood. Um, and I suppose really now the uh, the thing to do is uh, is test it out. Okay, so um, here's the mallet. I've got a couple of little offcuts of wood here just to give you an example of, of how it works. Uh, so we start off with just a little small block. Um, obviously, you've seen this fray before in a few of my other videos. And all you want to do line it up um, where, you, where you want your split to be. And do one sort of firm, hard strike with the uh, with the mallet, and there we go. Two pieces, one hit. Uh, not sure if you can see this on the camera, but you've got one very small dent here, uh, which obviously will happen, um, but nothing nothing more than that. And then you can just do the same thing. You take a larger piece of wood and do exactly the same thing. So that, that's now caught, that's bitten right in. Um, the bit of wood is a little bit too small for me to twist, so I'll have to set it in a bit further. Might give us enough leverage. Yeah. And there you go. So fairly clean and even split. Um, again, the, the bigger the piece of the wood, the more, the more control you have over splitting them. <coughs> um, and as I was saying at the beginning of the video, there are other ways you can make these. Um, I prefer not to, I don't really see the point, um, it's, it's just a lot more work. But what you can do, so you, you, you take this piece, that obviously we've already made this one, um, and if you were to cut with a saw, um, sort of maybe halfway through the wood, all the way around, um, you can then either take an axe, um, or a throw, or, or even batten with a knife, um, down to your cuts, and it basically will leave you with sections um, not, not too dissimilar to this. So you'll end up with a square section, or, or a pentagonal section, or however many splits you've had to make. Um, and then the same thing, you either use your knife or your draw knife um, to pare that down. Um, if I'm out in the woods, um, I might possibly do it. Um, so obviously I don't generally tend to take a push knife or a draw knife with me, um, but the, 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 the issue I have with making them that way is they're not quite as strong. Um, because you've had to cut a line round here, um, where, whereas this is all part of the wood, albeit you, you've, um, you've cut it down, um, the saw cut is not quite as strong, so you basically you've removed more, a lot more material than we have done here. Um, again, it still works, and if it's something you're using for a, for a bushcraft trip and you're out for a couple of days, it should be absolutely fine um, for something like this, which I tend to use in my workshop quite, quite regularly. Um, and if I'm going out specifically to pick up wood and I want to split it while I'm out there, um, I'll throw one of these in my bag. Um, you know, if, if the wood's too heavy to carry home um, or there's a little bit too much, I can leave this in the woods and make another one within 10 minutes. Um, so anyway, I hope this was helpful. Um, any questions, please uh, drop a note in the comments. Uh, if you want to see me doing more of this, if you've got any ideas of uh, something you'd like to see me do, um, feel free to subscribe and, uh, and let me know. Thanks a lot.